Hi, y'all. It's Bridget Cutshaw with Real Things Living. Today, my guest is Kate Taylor. She's a confidence coach based in Scotland. And I really appreciate her being here today. She's doing a lot to help people. Kate, can you come um, introduce yourself? Hi, uh, so as Bridget said, I'm Kate Taylor. I'm a confidence coach living in Edinburgh. Um, I started my confidence coaching business about a year ago. And since then, I basically help women break free from society standards and just learn to love themselves so that they can do more with their life and ultimately just create the world into a more welcoming place for everyone. It's definitely needed. I think um, 2020 put a lot of stress on people, right? So that's when you said, it is, was it in 2020 you started your, your business? Yeah, it was. That's good. <laughs> um, so what made you want to do this? What made you think that women specifically needed some help with building confidence? I mean, there's so <laughs> many things, to be honest. Like, to start off with, it was, it was lived experience for me. I always felt like I didn't fit in. I always felt pressured to act a certain way. We were we were always labeling people based on what they were doing. And the older I got, the more I saw this, the more I realized it was happening. And I studied to be a teacher. So I did a four year teaching degree. I'm a fully qualified teacher. But when I was in schools, things were so restricted. I wasn't allowed to work with kids one on one when they needed it. I wasn't allowed to do certain things just because of the way that the, the system is structured. So when I graduated, I was like, right, what can I do? And I didn't really know confidence coaching and life coaching was really like a, a real thing as such. So I went into personal training and essentially I was helping women with their confidence there. But the more I was doing it, the more I was like, actually, I just really like the conversations. I like helping with the mindset. And going into lockdown was almost like a blessing in disguise because I was suddenly forced to just do Zoom sessions and do sessions online. And I realized we were spending more time talking than we were training. And that's when I really clicked. I was like, I don't, I don't want to do the training part of this anymore. I want to do the mindset and the talking and helping people through. So I got my life coaching qualification from there and just haven't looked back since. Cool. So the training you meant like uh, physical you know, training. Yeah. Okay. So your background is actually you, when we previously talked, you did, you were involved in sports when you were younger and so what specific sport did you uh, be involved in? So my two main sports were ski racing and volleyball. Oh, wow. Um, for volleyball, I was just under the Scottish team. I trained with the Scottish team, but I never competed for them. Um, but for ski racing, that was probably my main sport. I was posing them in British events. I was Scottish champion for a couple of years. So it was a huge aspect of my life. And we've discussed like we chatted about this before and I've discussed this before with with other things as well it was such an important part of my life because it created this real competitiveness in me it created this drive to achieve it created really solid friendships it created this this drive to always want adventure as well and want that kind of freedom which probably took me out of teaching because I knew what it felt like to be completely free in the mountains but on the flip side it was also a way that I felt very isolated. None of my friends at school skied, never mind ski raced. A lot of my friends in the ski racing like community, they all went to private schools. They had quite wealthy backgrounds. And I didn't have a poor background, but I wasn't on the same level as they were. And it kind of put me into this place where I was like, oh, I don't quite fit in at school. And I don't quite fit in at skiing. So where's my place? And I think that's one of the things I really struggled with growing up as well. As much as sport was great, it definitely had a, had a downsides for me as well. I, I like that um, you're, you're saying that a lot of us do feel like we're not in the box, right? We try to find our way through life and who knows what you'll be doing in 10 years, right? <laughs> but I think it's so important to help people in, in conversations. People like suppress their feelings a lot. Um, I'm like you, I was a, a female involved in sports, but I think I did it too. I felt like I needed to survive a little bit is that the right word and um I'm a lot older than you but it was really critical point in my life and I I thought I got encouragement not only from my friends because you feel like you don't fit in but from coaches and that's why I think coaches in general they're associated with sports but the coaching like you're saying like to 
a confidence in um, just life in general is so complicated. And I think your generation is what's creating this um, better openness, be creating freedom, <laughs> right? We, we do need to have some rules and things like that, but sometimes um, it's okay if you don't, I shouldn't say follow me, I came in my mouth wrong, but you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, society always has standards that they put on you and some of them are legit things, like some, th like some things like law, when it comes yes. to like, don't murder someone. Of yes, exactly. <laughs> but for the other standards where it's like, at school, I remember getting reprimanded because I didn't want to wear a skirt and I wanted to wear shorts like the boys because it was easier for me to go and play football. And I remember getting told off for that. And rules like that, they are the things that really then put us into a box that we don't want to fit in. Yes. I remember growing up, I was always described as a tomboy. And looking back, that really frustrates me because I was like, why couldn't I just be me? Why did I have to get categorized as a tomboy? And then as I grew up, it, it went into different categories. And like, you're always being told, oh, like you don't fit in. You're, you're not a girly girl because you don't like makeup and wearing dresses and pink. And I was like, no, because <laughs> I like going and skiing. What is wrong with that? It, right. It, I so relate to you on that. Well, back in when I was in high school, of course, we weren't allowed to wear uh, like a skirt that showed our knees. You know what I'm saying? Or you couldn't. But then I was a, also a cheerleader. But then you wouldn't believe the outfits we wore. Okay. They, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that was very sexist if you think about it. And um, so it was just kind of, I felt uncomfortable about that, those rules. Um like you, I, I felt, uh, I don't know, I never, like I said, I didn't feel like I fit in. And I'm so glad that I made friends. And I think my biggest takeaway from being involved in sports is to be kind, right? <laughs> and, and there's a lot of, um, I don't know, harsh criticism sometimes. Yeah, from yeah, there's a lot. And <laughs> it comes, I think, and I don't want to, to categorize things too much, but a lot of the time it does come a lot from girls sport because of the way the, that girls are conditioned by society. We're like, we're told to be, if, we, if we're mean to someone, we're instantly bitchy. Therefore, yes. <laughs> like seeing a comment becomes really negative, even if you're trying to help. And especially at an age where you don't really understand the social boundaries. So kind of between 10 to maybe even 18 for some people, they don't quite get, oh, if I say something that I think is helping, they might take it as an insult. They might take it negatively. And it can be very difficult to find that balance because you're all like, that's the experience I got when I was teaching was we tried to do a lot of peer teaching. So a lot of kids teaching other kids. And a lot of the time it ended up in arguments. It ended up in girls going into huffs because one of their friends had said, oh, in badminton, you could lift your racket higher. And all of a sudden it was like, what, do you not think I'm good at badminton? And it's <laughs> stuff so small, but this is something that the generation that I'm in and the generations below me are definitely trying to create this better atmosphere between you can have constructive criticism, you can have these debates. Right, and it's, you want to, I think what you're helping too is to not take it too personally when someone gives you feedback. And I, yeah. I've, um, it's kind of hard, you know, and like another point that I was uh, back in the day, I wanted to be at one point like a flight attendant. I don't know why, just all those things you want to do. I was told I was too short. Back in the day, you had to have a minimum height, you know, isn't it just kind of, like you said, with women, how we have to fit in certain things to be a certain thing. And I'm one of those that's a little stubborn. So like, whatever, I can't, a lie about my height, right? But that's why I went to find something that I'm passionate about. What I have always been drawn into communications and 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 like this, the podcasting, I think is 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 so helpful. And I like to always converse and make people feel a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that um, you guys just listen. Kate reached out to me, isn't that right? I think it's apparently I must have made some kind of public comment in a good way <laughs> for her. To reach out and i think what you're doing is you're being uh, being a good role model and it's really about not just what you say right it's kind of what you do it's kind of exactly i actually used to have a coach that always used to say do as i say not as i do and 
it was part of the reason he said that he was a ski coach but he grew up in the era before we had like bendy gates so like very different style of skiing yeah but that then reinforced into me that like sometimes adults do things that we don't need to follow and that was really confusing as a child because we were always told like have your role models follow what they're doing keep pushing in that sense so as as someone who is now an adult and now has people coming to me looking for advice looking for what to do I always try to show a completely authentic self I don't ever try to cover up if I'm having a down day I don't sit there and be like oh I'm feeling amazing I just say look guys I'm having a bit of a down day but I'm still going to show up I'm still going to be here I'm still going to make sure that I'm, I'm providing what I can but at the same time if I'm having a great day and my cup is totally full, I try to share as much as I can in terms of passing on the energy that I've got from my cup. Because if you've got a full cup, what's stopping you pouring it into someone else right. to give them a bit of a boost? I love that analogy, right? Um, it's really helpful. And a lot of people, their cups are half empty and they're going to need some kind of um, confidence boost like what you're doing. Yeah. So do you like do one-on-one or do you group? group things I'm just curious I do both um okay. so I do one-to-one -one coaching and I do group coaching it's all online um and it's all kind of a similar structure in terms of going through like uh, I've got my main program which is a 90-day program okay um, but essentially I've developed something called the five pillars of confidence and they're essentially all around what makes a confident woman so it's things like having boundaries having self-love having a, a powerful clan around you right. um having tenacity and like things like that that are then coming in and ultimately that's that's going to help you be a confident individual so that's what I kind of base my coaching around I like the you brought up boundaries and I just like that word for some reason I mean because we want I'm one of those people like oh I, I you know I get <laughs> excited <laughs> about certain things I'm like focus right it's kind of like a boundary too and and you got to learn to say no sometimes right yeah I think some of us feel like to fit in we want to say yes to everything so maybe absolutely I, I actually did a series on this a couple of weeks ago in my private Facebook group where we talked about not being a people pleaser and working out where like why you are a people pleaser and then how to come away from it and essentially it can come from a fear of rejection it can come from a fear of conflict it can come from a fear of being disliked it like it, it's really complex for why people are people pleasers but ultimately the things like saying no and prioritizing what's important to you are the things that need to come out. I always say action is the antidote to fear. So if you've got a fear of some sort, do an action, down. do something that's going to that's gonna help you overcome that fear because until you take action, it keeps ruling your life. And I'm not, I'm not a big advocate for fake it till you make it. Yes. I personally think that that just covers up the problem instead of actually dealing with it. But once you've uncovered that fear, once you've uncovered the belief, then you can take action to start overcoming it and to start rewriting it. Because I sometimes don't believe that all beliefs can be completely rewritten, but you can rewrite parts of it enough that then you can function without it ruling your life. I know for me, I had a huge belief that I wasn't good enough growing up and that, that resonated into my adulthood uh, or my adult life as well. And because of that, I developed an eating disorder. I developed an exercise obsession. I also um, struggled in my business for the first year as well. Not this one, but the one before, because I really just couldn't deal with this pressure. And I kept covering it up and I kept dealing with each issue individually until I realized, oh, it's actually because I don't believe I'm good enough. Right now that I know that, I can now deal with that. And everything fell into place. I got a great relationship. My business changed and then it started booming. I've got a great relationship with exercise and food now, all because I dealt with the, the root cause instead of just what it was presenting as. I love that. I love that you're sharing that because we all um, are, have fear to do anything <laughs> sometimes. There's another analogy I've heard like, just ship it, right? And so um, I've had also an issue sometimes of perfectionism. It has to be perfect, right? And um, it, maybe it's from the generation from I'm from. And so that's why I'm like, just ship it. It's okay. And then you can tweak it later if you have to. Yep. And that's, I think, because I, I mentioned I'm in, in the communications, like book stuff. People are afraid to like publish a book because they feel like it's so permanent. 
but it's it's okay and people um have some great ideas i think they should share i think that's why these videos and podcasts are so popular now maybe because of what happened last year and i think what you're doing is going to help like psychologists too because isn't that like growing booming there's not my understanding i read here in the united states there's not enough for for the of those kind of people around to help support uh, because of the stress we're all feeling and, and yeah, the change the change is what's happened yeah yeah absolutely i know there's a lot of people in the last 12 months at least that have been really struggling with their mental health and there's a difference between what i do and therapists and counselors but it is very close because just the way that the nature is but if someone's got like a serious trauma or something they need to work right, with it's different from yeah. the past, of course they go to a therapist or a counselor but if someone's just feeling a bit low in themselves not feeling good about themselves I've got a lot of people right now that are really fearing going back out into the world post lockdown like we're in a full lockdown just now and I've got a lot of people contact me saying okay that whole idea of actually seeing my friends face to face is terrifying me like even zoom has put in face filters now so it can make you look like you've got smoother skin it can make you look skinnier and like most most apps have this now and it's making people have this real fear over wait what if people just see me right like I'm not good enough and that and that's another thing I'm from the you know generation like I'm very uh I don't care I'm wearing a sweatshirt as I'm talking to you but I don't put, you know, I'm one of those girls, like, I don't like, I don't ever care about makeup. I look a little different when I do have it put on me, but, um, but that's not important to me. I, yeah. I've learned, like you said, the boundaries of, of finally, yeah. <laughs> but it's kind of there, you, you're put up on a pedestal and you're like, you have to look a certain way, but I love that you're pointing out that we need to be ourself. Absolutely. And authentic identity is the other five of the five pillars. And without knowing who you are and being fully comfortable with who you are you're never going to be happy in life and unfortunately there are so many people that don't know who they are because they're finding it so hard to fit in so they're trying to fit themselves into a mold right fit them. it's like someone told me the other day that they feel like a square peg trying to go into a circular hole and they just don't fit so they're kind of like shoving themselves into this hoping that the the squareness will turn into a circle and I was like, I, when I was chatting to her, I was explaining kind of how we can come away from this and how we can find herself a square board with other square pegs. And it's all about surrounding yourself with people that you believe are good for you, that you believe help you fit in, instead of trying to push yourself into a round hole when you're actually a square peg. I've also, yeah, believe in trying to be around more positive people. I think that's helpful too. Um, some of us, I don't have, I'm not positive hundred percent of the time every day, but I've always tried to look at the good in the situation. So that may, Absolutely. that helps you with your mindset, I, I believe. Yeah, definitely. Um, it definitely does. And even if you can't see the positive in the moment, yeah, later. see the positive afterwards. Like I've definitely had some things in my life that were not enjoyable in the moment. I've had some serious trauma in the past and at the time, terrifying couple of months later I wouldn't even talk about it a couple of years later I just started and then now I look back on it and think that's the reason that I'm such a good coach is because I can empathize with some things yes. that's the reason that I can understand when someone comes to me and tells me that they feel pressured by certain people or they feel pressure to do certain things I can empathize with them because of my experiences and without those I would never be the person that I am and I love who I am. So I wouldn't change a single thing about my past, even all the rubbish stuff. I, I like how you took your experiences to help you focus on what your purpose is, right? And and not to hide it, right? Absolutely. <laughs> that the right word. Yeah, so, no, it is. And there's so many people that do hide their past because they're uh -huh. ashamed of it. Even if it's something that someone would look at and they're thinking, why are you ashamed of that? Either that's not your fault or that's nothing to be ashamed of. But I, I, I've got friends who had eating disorders as well who don't talk about them anymore. And they're like, oh, that wasn't me. And I'm like, well, I had one and I've embraced it and I actually now use it to help others. So right. I love that aspect of me, even though it was horrible at the time and it was horrible coming out of it, it, it. It's amazing now to look back and think, 
one, I overcame that, and two, I'm now helping others who have been in that similar situation and lost their confidence because of that. Right. You had uh, mentioned earlier, like the five pillars. Can you like mention them one by one, so then, um, so we can like summarize it? Can you do that? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so you've got the authentic identity, which is all about being who exactly who you are. Um, having a powerful clan, and the only reason I use the word clan is because I'm Scottish. Um, <laughs> it's just about having the powerful people around you. Um, you've got establishing establishing effective boundaries. So that's boundaries with your own time, but also boundaries with people around you, making sure you're not people pleasing all the time. Um, oh, my brain's gone totally blank. What else is in it? <laughs> I, I recite these every day, all day. And now I'm like, oh, I can't remember. It's too late for me just now. Um, that's okay. I said the other two earlier. Right. All right. That's, I just wanted to list it. And what we can do when I summarize all this, guys, I'll have it in the summary. I was just curious because you mentioned it and I only heard two, but then um, I've been writing notes down as we're talking. But oh, that's so odd. I definitely said all five earlier. So authentic identity, ever blooming self-love, right. effective boundaries, a powerful clan and long lasting tenacity. Yes. I did lasting. say them all earlier, but I was like, because I, you know, when you have an order that you always go in and then when you say it in the wrong order you then forget all the other right things. that's okay that's what's just happened it, so- it, it's uh that's what life is about like I have like I'm talking to people sometimes and I'm like ah, I'm familiar with things and I'm like ah I was calling brain farts <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a total brain fart it's okay. It's, it's being normal. And you're a little bit ahead of me in, in time. So you probably had a long day. That's yeah. It's eight o'clock at night over here. I'm normally oh my like, gosh, I'm so ready sorry. for bed. No, oh, wow. Well, thanks. <laughs> but, uh, well, I think it's really good that what you're doing and it, I'm so glad that you're focusing on, on women because I think they've always had issues. I you know, what I'm trying to say like, yeah. um, they've always felt the pressure to be a certain thing. And then at the same time, they're the ones that take care of every, other people, right? They're the ones that yep. make shit happen. Oh, I'm sorry, I said that. <laughs> so, <It's all> right. <laughs> yeah, I think I definitely, I've had this kind of internal dilemma in my head for the last maybe six months. Where I've, there's, I've had some guys approach me as well, being like, yeah, I know you only work with girls, but I'm really struggling with this. Can we have a chat? And I've not said no, I've had a quick chat with them, I've seen what's going on, and then I've referred them to a male coach, because I've I've got a good friend who's a male coach, doing a very similar thing, but he's got the experience as a man, and this is one of the things that gender is such an interesting thing, because obviously it's so fluid, and especially this year there's been a lot more awareness towards things like transgender, and also people that are non-binary, so I have this real internal dilemma about well, do I want to just be a women's coach? But I also know that my experiences were made more intense by being a woman. Right. And I know there's a lot of women that have gone through similar things to me. So then I'm like, well, actually, if I can help those women that went through a similar thing to me, or I can stop them going through those things because they're women, because they're female, because they've got that added pressure of by the time you're 30, you need to stop so you can have kids and start a family. <laughs> I don't want that. I do want kids. I want a family, but I'm not prepared to stop my work when I have a child, whereas that's kind of something that's put onto us from society. The same thing with the fact that women's bodies are trends. You have like the Marilyn Monroe era, and then you've got like the Kate Moss era, and now you've got the Kim Kardashian era. And it just baffles me the fact that something as simple as a human body can become a trend and people will literally get surgery though they'll, they'll use things like corsets which change your internal organs right. just to follow a trend and because of all that and then like actually no I am a women's coach I absolutely want to work with women because I know what it feels like and I learn better from women and just my whole thing is I'm a huge feminist as well and I just want to see the world being an equal place and the only way I think that can happen is from women having the confidence to go out and actually do something with their lives and ultimately that will then create the change that we're looking for down the down the road exactly just make it more um I should say balance is that the right term but yeah. maybe more even maybe yeah and it's uh we all have our our um specialties and I uh I think I, I don't know if I mentioned in our first call 
but I was in the uh, very, very male dominated industry. Okay. <laughs> but I survived it because it was more, maybe because my competitive side came out because I was, <laughs> but that's kind of what it was. I was just, um, I stood out because I was nice, nicer too. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and, but that's me. That's, I don't know why I've, I'm that way, but I was trying to be Bridget and uh, I'm very competitive, but I'm not aggressive. And I took uh, being ethical is important too. I think more, I mean, that's just me. I shouldn't say this, but women are usually a bit more ethical, maybe in a situation. Um, is that up? You know, I don't know, but I'm a, from a different generation. Yeah, I mean, there are, there's a lot of studies to show the difference between male and female hormones. And naturally males obviously have more testosterone. Naturally females obviously have more estrogen. Right. And that does change the difference because testosterone obviously is an aggression hormone. Therefore males are naturally more aggressive. Yeah. But the thing that really bothers me is if a male and a female get put in the same situation. So say you've got two board members at a meeting and you've got a female who's really passionate and talking about something and you've got a man who's really passionate and talking about something and they've got opposing ideas and they both raise their voices the man is described as passionate and the woman is described as hysterical and that's where the problems come in is because these things try to put us back into this box that we are not worthy we are not enough and that's then where I think the confidence needs to come in for that woman to turn around and say no, I'm not hysterical. I'm just as passionate as he is. You've just categorized me. That's on you, not on me. Right. I've been called bossy, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is or whatever, but, um, it's, it depends on who I'm talking to, I guess. No, I, but I've survived. We're all survived. We all adapt. Absolutely. And, um, it's just, we're just going to have to make our, you know, do our, uh, our little bit that we can. And, I think what you're doing, you're not trying to conquer the world. You're trying to conquer one person at a time. And I think that, is that the right, I should say conquer, help. <laughs> Came out of my mouth wrong. I'm not into conquering, but I mean, to, you're helping individuals. And I think that's more of a domino effect. Absolutely. Uh, right? I would I would love to change the world, but yeah. I'm aware of where I come in into the role where I'm in just now. I'm still quite early in my career. My business is still very early. So if I can help one person and then that one person is more positive and maybe they even help another three people in their life then I've helped four people and the, the the people that I really try to work with are people that either have kids or are going to be having kids in the near future so that they can pass that on to the future generations ultimately probably not in my lifetime but within three generations I would like confidence coaches to not exist anymore I don't I don't think that we we should be needed if we're raising people to be confident individuals. But right now we are needed because there are so many people with confidence issues. Right, and a lot of it is about, um, our, our, some of our cultures are about power too. <laughs> is that the right, and, and some people, uh, they have insecurities, I think. I mean, that's just, that are try to be powerful. Um, we need that, we need good role models. And I just think what you're doing is, great and I'm I just want more people to learn more about you where can they find you on the internet um, so you can just jump onto my website it's www.confidence-coach.co and it's not .com it's .co <laughs> okay and what I'll do for the listeners when I uh, summarize this I'll have a link in there so they can learn more about you and I'll even include your Instagram link amazing which is uh, at confidencecoach.co I really appreciate your time, Kate, and I think you're going to make a bigger impact than you realize. I hope so. I really do. Thanks again. No worries. Thank you. Bye.